This is the J. Scott Outdoors podcast on Western big game hunting and fishing brought to you by GoHunt.com Insider. Research faster, hunt more. Go to GoHunt.com forward slash insider and use the J. Scott promo code when signing up to receive a $50 Kuyu gift card. I'm your host, J. Scott, and I live and breathe hunting and fishing, spending half the year in the field experiencing God's creation. I hope you'll enjoy hearing about our adventures. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have Joel Turner, who was a two-time Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation world champion elk caller and owner and operator of ironmindhunting.com. And that's iron, like pump iron, mindhunting.com. And Joel has a great online course, How to Cure Target Panic, and how to understand what target panic is. And you're going to hear all about it in this episode. And if you go to ironmindhunting.com and use the J. Scott promo code, all one word, J. Scott, you'll get a $25 discount off of his course. And I'm excited to have him on here today. Before we get to that, a couple of reminders. The credit cards for Arizona Elk and Antelope are being hit as we speak. A bunch of uh, people are already excited about the upcoming fall season because they've got Arizona Elk and Antelope tags in their pocket. We're anticipating the actual release of the results uh, maybe this week or next and uh, hopefully you are one of the fortunate people that had their cards hit and also remind you that Colorado uh, big game regulations are due on April 5th they're postmarked April 5th you can also do the uh, deer and elk applications online Uh, make sure you do that before April 5th Uh, everything has to be postmarked uh by april 5th so i think you have till the afternoon uh make sure to get those in guys i want to thank you for all your support of my podcast if you'd like to send me a question or comment or something you'd like to hear on the podcast as an episode you can email me at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com i appreciate you guys following along on our youtube channel make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel Uh, We're going to be kicking out a lot of great videos here in the future. And uh, also on Instagram, at jscottoutdoors, my associate, Dar Colburn, at Dar Colburn. You can always follow along on our website, jscottoutdoors.com, our guiding website, Colburn and Scott Outfitters. Also, gouldsturkeyhunt.com. We are booked for 2016 Goulds Turkey, and we are now booking for... 2016-17 2016-17 coos deer hunts in Sonora, Mexico, as well as 2017 spring Goulds turkey hunts. So, uh, guys, I also want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank our title sponsor, GoHunt.com Insider, for their support. They've been with me almost since the beginning, and I'd like to thank uh, PhoneScope, Wilderness Athlete, Utah Hydrographics, The Outdoorsman's and Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazines. Guys, this is going to be a great episode. Let's get right to it. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have a two-time RMEF world champion elk caller, Joel Turner, and it's going to be awesome to talk to Joel. We have already done a podcast episode with him, oh, about almost a year ago and had good response. Joel, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jay. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, picking your brain a little bit and talking to you about target panic and um, talk to you about iron mine hunting and what you have going on because uh, I've been able to, uh, you know, hear about what you're doing and it's, uh, you know, something that I think uh, a lot of people, uh, for one, need to know about and two, want to know about. Um, right. But since, since uh, I last talked to you, I think we've had an elk season uh, in between. Uh, how did you? How was your elk season, and how how was your uh, elk calling? It was great. I I got to do four different states this year. I called in sixteen bulls for 
other folks. I didn't get to do much hunting myself, but it's always fun to call for other people as well. And, you know, we just put all those elk calling principles that we talk about to, to work and it was fantastic. The old bull calling cows bugle was, was rocking this year for sure. Good. So it worked, worked well for you. It did. Yeah. I'm up to, I'm up to 29 herd bulls now to that one sound. That's fantastic. That's yeah. awesome. Are you are you going to get any time to do any spring turkey hunting uh, coming up here, or what? I, what do you got I on play? Our, our season starts on the April fifteenth, and I'm taking my wife and son. We're heading over east, uh, east Washington, and it's going to be a good time. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. Joel, let's uh, let's get right into uh, this organization that you've created, and you know, tell people what is Iron Mind. Uh, hunting and how are you helping people? Well, Iron Mind Hunting is it's the hub for all things related to target panic. I mean, I I would say that I am on a lifelong quest to rid the world of target panic. And I started this I started this whole controlled process shooting program out of necessity. And it it was in the law enforcement world that I first started into this stuff. And it was in firearms training. I had to I had to teach a police officer how to concentrate on a trigger press so intently that they could, you know, end that threat at distance with precision. And that's not something that just happens automatically. And that's what, you know, I had kind of a light bulb moment one day when I was teaching a young recruit. And from that, time it has I have put all those things that I have done all those experiments that I've done in the firearms world in high stress events and I have taken all that and put it into the archery world and you know every shooter out there is dealing with shot anticipation some shooters would say that they don't have target panic and you know if somebody says that either they're very regimented and they know how to do how to shoot a perfect arrow uh, but most people are somewhat in denial because maybe they don't know what, what target panic is, but they're certainly dealing with shot anticipation because shot anticipation is natural. Target panic is natural. So that's what Iron Mind Hunting is all about. It's, <clears throat> it's getting people's mind right so that they can have success without all the failures that I have you know, had to experience in my hunting and shooting careers. So that's where we're coming from with it. Tell me exactly what is target panic? Target panic is, it deals with the core problem of shooting. And unless you understand this core problem, people are just scratching at the surface. But if you understand the core problem, and the, the core problem of shooting, be it with a rifle, a pistol, a bow, is the mind will not allow you to cause your body impact as a surprise. It just won't do it. If it knows when that impact or when that explosion is going to happen, and it has a way to time that, you are born with a response to that. You know, you see it in muscle contractions or or closing the eyes. Uh, Just it's, when it's put into the shooting world, it's all input into the shot, which deviates your point of impact. So target panic is natural. You are born with an aversion to explosions. So unless you know how to concentrate, how to think, and how to work around it, then you're constantly stuck in this cycle of learning. Because target panic comes from the learning process where when you first learn a movement, you're in the cognitive stage and you have to think about every specific aspect of that movement. Just like the first time you shot a bow. Everything was pretty easy. It was straightforward. You drew back, you aimed, and you released. But then what did you do? Then you practiced. And you practiced this movement of shooting about all these movements and all these muscle contractions and relaxations. You've built all these motor programs with a goal of making that entire movement automatic. 
just like every other movement that you've learned. The problem in shooting is, again, that core problem. There's an explosion at the end of the movement. So your body has a way to time that. And it creates this. I mean, we see it all the time in firearms, right? When somebody's shooting their rifle and they keep their safety on and they think the safety's off and they think it's ready to roar and they press that trigger and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden you see the body flinch. Well, we never get to see that in archery because that movement, those, all of that shot anticipation, the recoil bracing, it's all masked by the bow going off. If we could build a bow that would only shoot sometimes, right? Sometimes when you work through the trigger on your release or you let it go with your fingers, if the string stayed absolutely still, then you would see those same effects that you see when that safety's on and they thought it was off. So target panic is absolutely natural. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about what what people see. I mean, how does target panic you know, raise its ugly head. Yeah, let's hear about it. So in compound shooting, you know, when people are shooting sights and release or, you know, if they're not shooting the sights, if they are shooting mechanical release, you see it as it first starts when, you know, when they first start shooting, they draw back, they put their pin on the target and they work through the trigger and they press the trigger like they think they should press the trigger on a gun. So they're moving their finger and then they practice. And all they practice is this shot instead of, you know, we'll get to using shooting to practice concentration, but they practice their shot and they practice it. You know, people say, well, I go, I shoot a hundred arrows a day. Well, what did you really practice with that? And all they did in their practice is they made their shot more and more automatic and they made their recoil bracing more and more efficient to the point where them their mind learns the process and it learns that when the pin goes on the target, that bow is going to go off. So it, you putting your pin on the target equals an explosion. So what it does is it holds you off of the target and you become locked off the target. Like you know it's, you know it's 30 yards and you've got a 30-yard pin, but the 30-yard pin is locked six inches below the spot. And as long as you're off the spot, the mind is calm as a cucumber and it's readying itself for that explosion. It knows it needs to get to the center. So what it does, is it has built this motor program, a linked motor program. So the, the bow jumps to the target and the trigger gets punched all as one motor program. We see it all the time if people are locked underneath or above the target with their pin. And it's a very quick drop to the target or jump to the target, and the trigger is punched simultaneously. And that is one of the biggest things that we see. But punching the trigger itself is another form of target panic. When I watch most people on the range, they're working their trigger. I mean, some people don't even touch their trigger. It's like their fingers like an inch above it. It looks like it's a cobra ready to strike that thing. Right? <laughs> so, but they have to keep their finger off of the trigger just to get their pin on the target. So now let's say they they keep their finger maybe behind the trigger. So they got their finger behind the trigger. That allows them to get their finger or to get their pin on the target. But then here comes that finger and it gets ready and it raises up above that trigger and then whammo and it goes through it. And, you know, this punching of the trigger is just linked to all the recoil bracing. If you were to videotape in slow motion their bow hand, you would see that the contraction of their bow hand is simultaneous with the punching of the trigger. All things that are just simply recoil bracing. It's your body's way of protecting you. So, so you, would you ahead. say when people are fresh into archery and they're just starting to shoot the bow, say for the first month or so, that that really they haven't shot enough to for their body to recognize that explosion, and so, and then all of a sudden it creeps in over time. It creeps in very quickly. You know, the first time the first time they shoot a bow. 
you know, they maybe they're taking instruction, they draw their bow back, they put their pin on a target, they get their finger on the trigger, and they work that trigger, and then the bow goes off. The bow explodes, and the mind goes, okay, I know exactly what to do with this. So the second time they shoot their bow, it starts into learning those motor programs. And it takes only usually a, a month or so, and then people start to get what they think is better and better and their subconscious is going, oh yeah, we're getting better and better, but we're getting better at recoil bracing. So six months down the line, they're no longer a new archer, especially if they've practiced a lot. If they've practiced this, just their shot, you know, and it's the recoil bracing is linked to this. Six months down the road, now the shot's going off as soon as the pin gets on the target. It no longer, you no longer hold it there. And then another couple months down the road, and then it starts to go off just before it gets to the target. And then it just cascades from there. Then they start to wonder what's going on in their shot, and they start looking for instruction. And people have a lot of, there's a lot of patches out there that don't get to the core problem. Like, have you ever heard of blank veil shooting? Yeah. So blank bale shooting, you would stand in front of a bale or blind bale shooting, you'd shoot something with your eyes closed. And as soon as you close your eyes, you are then able to press that trigger again. You're able to get through it. But then the problem is, is that people use blank bale shooting and blind bale shooting for form practice. They get the perfect feel in that particular shot on the blind bale. They get that perfect feel but they don't go out. There's no transfer of that feel to actual aimed shooting because your eyes are the timing mechanism. Vision is the timing mechanism, right? They're looking at their sights. They see that it's on. That's when the mind goes now. See what I mean? So as soon as you close your eyes or shoot at something that you're not aiming on a blank veil, You've cut off the timing mechanism. So, therefore, you're able to shoot that perfect arrow, but then when you go out to actual shooting, now you have to aim. Now the timing mechanism is reengaged. So there's z almost zero transfer from blank bale shooting to actual shooting. It'll, it'll help you out for a very short amount of time. And then your mind learns it again, and then you're back into your target panic stage. I mean... You know, in traditional archery, there's guys that, you know, guys and gals that can't even get to full draw, right? I mean, they're, you might have somebody that's got a 29-inch draw and they're shooting, they're releasing the arrow at 24 inches, you know, and that's because them just getting to full draw equals the explosion, so their mind won't let them do it. It stops them at 24 inches, let's say, readies the body for the impact, and then there's this big yank back to the face and the string gets released all at the same time. So, I mean, to combat this stuff, you have to have a complete ro reprogramming of how you think during a shot. And the key statement there was you got to know how to think. And that's one of the things that I teach is actually the how of concentration. That's great stuff. I can't wait to dive into this a little more. Let's take a quick break here. Tired of relying on out-of-date numbers, spending too much on hunting consultants and seeing too little results? With Go Hunt Insider, the old way of doing things is over. With the introduction of draw odds and filtering 2.0, you'll have access to the most accurate, up-to-date information in the industry. You can filter by state, species, trophy potential, weapon, specific days or months of the year, harvest success rate, male-to-female ratios, and much more. All of this leads to easily finding the best hunt for you. So what are you waiting for? Visit GoHunt.com slash insider and join the movement. Use the J. Scott promo code when signing up and receive a $50 Kuyu gift card. Since 1982, the Outdoorsman's in Phoenix has made it their goal to provide the very best customer service combined with the latest and greatest optics and accessories in the business. Outdoorsman's is the leading designer and manufacturer of high-quality tripods 
and mounting accessories for any hunter's optical needs. Go to Outdoorsmans.com or call 1-800-291-8065 and use the J. Scott promo code to receive 10% off all Outdoorsman's packs and pack accessories. Okay, Joel, before I get into some of the how, uh, first, let's back up. Let's let's back up for, I didn't do a really good job with my intro. Tell me a little bit of background on yourself and as far as, I mean, you are a shooting instructor, certified shooting instructor. Maybe tell me about a little bit of that progression um, to to give the listeners a little bit of background in that regard. Well, you know, I started shooting a bow when I was seven years old. And by the time I was eight years old, I had target panic. I mean, I'm I'm eight years old and I've got nobody to show me how to shoot this thing, and I'm locked off the target. At eight years old, I'm holding a couple feet over the target, dropping my bow in and letting the string go. You know, having a good old time at eight, but by the time I'm 18, that hasn't changed, right? So that's right. not so good. Then I became a, a police officer, and in the firearms world, I mean, when I, when I got my first pistol when I was 21 years old, I was a horrible shot. And I didn't know how to make myself better. But then I became, you know, I became a police officer and I started really thinking about this stuff. You know, how am I going to get myself out of this? Because now, now I'm a police officer or going to be a police officer. And my life's going to depend on this particular skill. And so that's when I started into... Uh, you know, bef- before I was a police officer, I was with the U.S. Department of Agriculture Wildlife Services. And in that agency, we did a lot of animal damage control where we had to, you know, we we had to use uh, certain weapon systems for certain damaged wildlife. And if you, if you miss, you know, you were, uh, it was not good. <laughs> so you yeah. were there for a specific reason. So, I got to be a better shot. And I started to figure things out when I was uh, when I was an agent in that, and those skills progressed into being a law enforcement officer. You know, having to be good. I had a reason to have to be good, and and I became a a pretty darn good shot. I took top firearms in my in my academy class, and and even taught a little bit while I was in the academy because there was other other students coming to me. And wondering how I did what I did, and I was not good at the time of explaining how I did it. And so then, uh, progression, a couple of years goes by, and now I become a firearms instructor. And that's where I really started into figuring out how to relay this information to somebody else and to get them to be able to do it for themselves. And you know, it was a it was a big moment for me when a recruit came back to me and said, I heard your voice in my gunfight. And that's a pretty big moment for you as a firearms instructor when they say that. So that's when I knew I was getting my point across. And that's when I I knew that this was the way to get people to concentrate because people were coming back to me and say, Hey man, this is what happened in my gunfight. And the skills that you taught me got me through this. Here's how I did it. And it wasn't until I had an epiphany in the archery world. You know, I took this information and brought it over to the archery world. And I'm, you know, I can call in elk pretty darn good at it. Right but I couldn't hit them. It was ridiculous. I mean, I was the backyard hero with my bow. I was shooting a, a stick bow with a clicker at the time. Actually, I was shooting a compound with a clicker. Uh, no sights, bare bow with my fingers. Had a clicker on my bow. Could not, for the life of me, get through my clicker on a bull elk. Oh, I'd, I'd call them right in, but I couldn't hit them. I could not shoot that perfect arrow. 
And so that's when I started to figure out how did I get myself to do it in firearms? How did I get other people to do it in firearms? Now I got to take those skills, those mental skills that have actual transfer to real life stuff. And that's when I started figuring out how to do it for myself to start with. And then I was able to test it, right? That big Boel's coming in. I'm able to hold myself together and shoot that perfect arrow and then analyze it and go, okay, how did I do that? What decisions did I make in that shot? Why was that different than that bull elk two years ago when I lost my marbles on it? You know? So I was able to really analyze the shot, analyze what is going through my head, and analyze how did I get myself to concentrate. And so that's, that's where this system was born. And that's what I instruct. And it's just a phenomenal thing to be able to give people absolute control of their business. I mean, when they, when they leave my clinic or they take the online course or they read the book, they get an absolutely specific blueprint on how to shoot a perfect arrow under stress every time. So how many people have you worked with to date that have used your program? In the archery world, it's probably around 600, somewhere in there in seminar form and clinic form in the firearms world. It's well over 1800. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just been phenomenal because what I teach makes sense to people. And because I've been there, I've been in their shoes. I have failed time and time again, but now I know why I failed and how I failed. And now I know how to do it correctly, how to do it with control and how to show other folks how to do that. So it's just been a, it's been a heck of a journey and I'm constantly, constantly learning. And, you know, I'm, I've, claim to be a uh, always a student you know so what would you say you know what would you say are the top three to five signs of target panic that an archer might notice so if they notice if there's something in their shot that they cannot seem to control be it the pin getting on the target like if they're locked off target that's the core problem in shooting, that is target panic. If they're punching the trigger, that's target panic. If they can't get the full draw, that's target panic. If they can't let the string go, like sometimes uh, traditional archers will be locked on the target and they can't let it go. Well, think about that, core problem of shooting. Your mind will not allow you to cause your body impact as a surprise. It's not going to let you let that thing go. It's like, punching yourself in the face and trying to keep your eyes open. (laughs) So so those are, those are how it, how it forms, you know, locked off target, can't get the full draw, punching the trigger. And it's, there's nothing really, you know, people come up to me and they tell me, okay, here's what's happening in my shot. And they say, you know, I just, I can't quite get my pin on the target before I press the trigger. I said, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's around the world. I've talked to people in numerous countries. It's not an American thing or a German thing or a French thing. It is a human thing. It's how the mind learns. There's nothing like shooting. And the big thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to. I know many people uh, associate target panic with buck fever. Is it? Is that the same thing? It is the same thing. Because if you train, let's say you train and you practice and practice and practice, and all you have ever practiced is the physicality of shooting. And you may get to be a pretty good shot that way. But you plateau. You, you know, most archers plateau, and they can only get as good as their recoil bracing allows them to. So you take that system that's pretty fragile 
and then you put that in an extreme stress environment like hunting. Now you've got increased respiration, increased perspiration, you know, increased heart rate. <clears throat> All of those things, you lose some fine motor skill. You go into midbrain, right? The only thing in midbrain is fight or flight training and experience. And if all you have ever trained in is the physical skills of shooting, you are on a road to disaster. And same thing I was. I mean, I, I could not, I couldn't even aim at a bullock. I mean, I'd always shoot underneath them, right? Or if I Meaning was, you wouldn't even get, you would draw any, it would, you're, do you come, when you draw, do you come down to the target or up to the target? It depends on where I was in my target pen. Because I started, when I first started locking off the target, I'd be underneath it. I'd try to bring my pin up from underneath, right? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, maybe that's not working. Maybe I'll use gravity. So you see people dropping their bow in from the top, right? And then it locks high. It's not going to allow you to get on the target if being on the target equals the explosion of the bow going off. It will time it. It'll time your recoil bracing every single time. So it depends on where I was. Sometimes I'd shoot under bulls and sometimes I'd shoot over them. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just an, it was an absolute nightmare. So, uh, you know, the buck fever all of those things and all the fragility of that shot all gets, you know, emphasized exponentially under stress because you're not dealing with the cognitive brain anymore. You're thinking, oh, my God, it's a six by six. I'm going to be a hero. I hope I hit it. <laughs> and hope is one of the most disastrous things there is to a shot. Because if you hope you hit it, that means that you have no plan on how you're going to do it. You know what I mean? So Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you that um, I've had target panic before, and it's crazy because you can actually put your, for me, mm -hmm. I can put my finger be, with the release, put it behind yep. the trigger so that there's, yep. you know, no way the no bullet way is going to go off. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I draw back and I go, you know, go right to my pin going yep. right to, let's say, the dot. Mm -hmm. And I cannot, well, I shouldn't say I cannot, but I have a hard time holding the pin. Even though I know that I'm going to let down, I'm not even going to fire the bow. Mm -hmm. I would get where I couldn't even hold on the target, even though my finger, I mean... Even if I was telling myself, there's no way that this bow is going mm -hmm. off, just hold on the target and yeah. hold, you know. And and so, I mean, I've, I've had a little bout of this mm -hmm. uh, from time to time. And I think I even would kind of shoot through it, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would get where I'd come in from the left. Yep. And shoot it, shoot as I go by. I'd yep. come in from the top, shoot as I come down. Come from right. the bottom, shoot as I go up. So it almost yep. just became a, yep. and and, you know, at at you know, thirty, forty yards, you can do that a lot, you know, and you can get away with it. But if you start shooting at longer distances and yeah. you start doing that kind of guessing when it's going to yep. go off, mm -hmm. uh, that can be a nightmare. Yep, and we call it drive-by shooting. You know, we're just talking about getting the drive-by shooting suspect. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we call drive-by shooting. And think about, but think about your trigger press in that. You gave no thought to your trigger press. Your thought was all on aiming and just getting the pin on the target. And if your concentration is in aiming, then your subconscious is allowed to tell itself when to release the arrow be that with your fingers or punching the release. And if it's allowed to tell itself when to do that, it will always link recoil bracing to it. So what I teach is a whole different program on how to control it. And I teach people about the control systems that are within your mind. You know, there's two different control systems that people use. 
There's one called an open loop control system where the executive, your brain, sends a motor program to the effector. Like if you're punching the trigger, the effector would be your trigger finger. So once you send that motor program to it, it's the open loop control system is used for automatic movements, movements that are too fast for you to gain evaluation within the movement. They're too fast for you to stop or modify within the movement, right? Like think about a baseball swing. You wouldn't want to swing a baseball bat at a rate that you could stop it because that would screw up the entire, the totality of the movement, right? Right. But that's an open loop movement and that's supposed to be an open loop movement. But if you allow your shot activation movement, whatever that is for you, if you allow that to be an automatic movement, it will always be linked to recoil bracing. So to get out of it, you've got to use what's called a closed loop control system. On a closed loop control system, you have to decide to do it first. And the decision that you are making, the decision to get into this closed loop control system, you're deciding to choose a slower motor program. A motor program that's slow enough, the executive sends this slower motor program to the effector, but it's slow enough that it can be sent through what's called the comparator. The comparator is kind of your feedback guy, right? So it gets sent through the comparator and it says, too fast, Jay, or too slow, Jay, and you're able to modify that movement because you're evaluating it. You're moving at a rate that's slow enough that you could stop it or modify it anywhere within the movement. And that's the movement that has to be used for shot activation. Be it in your, you know, if it's your mechanical release, you're not sending the motor program to your finger. You're sending it to your back muscles because your back muscles are much easier to evaluate that movement, whether it's going right or not, right? So you would set that hook deep on that trigger, and then you don't move your finger again. Then you move your back muscles, right, with good back tension, and you move that slow enough that you could stop it or modify it anywhere within the movement. And I've got, you know, in the online course and in my live events, if I, I give people a test that shows them their speed limit. If you don't know the speed limit of your actual controlled movement, it's kind of difficult. But when you know your speed limit, you have a very good visual representation. Oh, I can't move any faster than that. And, you know, it, it's not that different for all humans that I've had do this test. I mean, it's, it's pretty doggone slow. But when you understand what your speed limit is, you then, it changes the way you shoot at game because you know how long it takes you now to shoot that perfect arrow. So if that bull is is moving, right, if you're not going to stop him, then you're going to use an open loop control system. That's got to be a timed trigger activation. But if that bull is standing out there, at, you know, 40 yards or whatever, and he's stationary, that takes precision. Precision takes a specific amount of time. Now you know what that time is. And it's a very powerful thing to be able to... It's powerful enough just to be able to get into a closed-loop control system. But that closed-loop control system always takes a decision. And the decision to do a movement... It has an explosion at the end of it. That's very difficult for the human mind to do. So it takes intense concentration. And that's where I teach people how to concentrate. Because, you know, you've told people in your life, I've told people in my life, I need you to concentrate on this. But we never tell them how to do it, do we? Let's take a quick break here, Joel. 
Utah Hydrographics is in the water transfer printing service and they are open to whatever you can dream up. Choose from a wide range of camel patterns, designs, and colors. Whether it's guns, bows, tools, rifle stocks, vehicles, steering wheels, fenders, dashboards, paint guns, fishing rods, cups, tripods, watches, knife grips, helmets for a local sports team or for your motorcycle, picture frames, mailbox, animal skulls, you name it, they can probably do it. Utah Hydrographics loves taking things that are general looking and turns them into something that looks fantastic and eye-popping. Give them a call and see what they can do for you and receive up to a 10% discount by using the J. Scott 16 promo code. Visit them at utahhydrographics.com or on Instagram at Utah Hydrographics. Whether you are interested in elk, deer, antelope, bighorn sheep, or moose, Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazines will bring the adventure to your mailbox. These publications feature articles on the finest hunting gear, tips and tactics from experienced hunters, field judging trophies, glassing techniques, calling strategies, and much more. To become a more knowledgeable and skilled hunter, subscribe today. Go to westernhunter.net forward slash jscott and enter your email address for a chance to win a $1,500 credit towards any Swarovski product. Joel, why does this topic get you so excited? Well, you know, when you see, like when I've got police officers coming back to me and telling me that that they heard my voice during a gunfight, that's powerful. And it's just as powerful to have that guy send me a picture of a big six by six bull elk and say, I used your system to do this. I never would have been able to do this without you. And that is reward for me as an instructor. I want people to have the success that I've had and the success that I now experience. When that bull elk's coming in, I know that I'm going to shoot a perfectly controlled arrow. I know exactly how I'm going to do it. And it's a beautiful thing. It, it, uh, you know, I still get the, the pitter pat of the heart and the heavy breathing and all that stuff. And I hope that never goes away. But when it comes down to the business of shooting, I know exactly how that's going to go. And that was, you know, these decisions that I talked about. That was the missing link. I used to have that, you know, I'd be the backyard hero. You know, I'd be able to shoot fantastic, get through my clicker every time in the backyard or if I was shooting a mechanical release, just back tensioning through that thing, no problem. That bull elk would be coming in, right? And I'd say to myself, okay, I'm going to shoot this. I'm going to do this right. I'm going to shoot a perfect arrow. And then here he'd come, and then time would pass, and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, there's the shot. And you know yourself, when you know that the shot is imminent, it changes. Things change. So that bull elk would come in, time would pass from that last decision that I made, and then when it would come to the shot, there's old hope again, spanking the heck out of my trigger, right? (laughs) Hope is a trigger banking machine (laughs) so so the problem was is that you know i was a backyard hero but i wasn't able to do it on game and the reason i wasn't able to do it is because i was making the decision at the wrong time i was making it too early so now when that bull elk comes in i have what i call my half draw moment now i make that decision to shoot that perfect arrow Within the shot itself, my half draw moment, when I verbalize it internally in my head, I say, I'm going to do this right. And what that does for me is it sets me into the present. It's no longer like this other person is shooting this shot. Hope's not shooting the shot for me anymore. I'm shooting this shot right now. And my half draw moment, so now I'm making the decision within the shot half draw and draw my bow back, I'm going to do this right. And that gets me through job number one in my shot, which is draw back and aim, get it done, watch it to keep it. That gets me through that first job. But I've got a whole other job to do, which is my shot activation movement. 
Now, answer me this. I would bet that every uncontrolled shot that you have ever shot, that I have ever shot, that anybody out there has ever shot as an uncontrolled shot, it was fired within one second of them believing the aim was complete. Absolutely. So what I did is I took that because my half-draw moment was getting me through job number one, but it wasn't necessarily getting me through job number two. I kept firing that arrow a little too early, right, with an open-loop movement. But I wanted it to be closed-loop, so I had that control of it. So that critical second is huge. It's that one second in time after you believe the aim is complete, and you've got to get yourself through that entire second. And what I found myself doing during that critical second is I found myself saying these words. Here I go. And if you think about that for a second, those people that have jumped out of airplanes or bungee jumped or jumped off a cliff or whatever, when they're standing in, on the edge of that bridge, they don't just automatically find themselves jumping off of that thing into the abyss. <clears throat> they're standing on the edge of it. They're about to make a decision that could potentially cause their body impact. And they say those same words. They look at you, they take a breath, and they go, here I go. And then off they go. So what that does for me, those here I go words, that fills my critical second, and it fills it with the decision to go into job number two. That reminds me to talk myself through that movement. It reminds me to evaluate it, and it reminds me that nobody's got a gun to my head making me shoot that shot. So it's these decisions that need to be made within the shot so that you're in the present. That's a very specific blueprint. And, you know, we talk about all the all the how to do all the, to carry those decisions out. You got to know what decisions to make, when to make them, and how to carry those decisions out. So that's the whole how is, you know, we talk about, you know, attentional cues, words that you use, and what those do for you as far as attentional flow to the muscles and all kinds of really cool stuff. And it, it sounds it, awesome. Yeah, it's just, it gains you that absolute control of your shot. And and when you know, I give you questions on, you know, to ask yourself after that perfect arrow or after that, you know, when you let it down, when you finally make a decision to let it down or or you shoot a bad arrow, you got to ask yourself these these questions so that you understand what was going through your head, what you were saying to yourself. Could I have stopped that movement? You know, and then when you answer those, you get that blueprint. You build the mold for a perfect arrow. And when you build that mold and you build it stronger with every perfect arrow you shoot, shooting without target panic or shooting a controlled arrow will never, ever be automatic. You have to work through every single shot because your natural system is always waiting in the background. It's always there going, oh, come on, Jay. Look at that site. It's on there. We just want to let this thing go. I'll help you with that. <laughs> right? That uh -huh. little gremlin, that gremlin's name is Hope, by the way. And it never goes away. It's always waiting in the background. So as soon as you don't decide to use a closed-loop control system, you will automatically default to nature, open-loop, automatic movements. Unfortunately, those are all linked to recoil bracing. So that's it's just a it's such a cool thing to get this control. That's what gets me so excited about this stuff. You know, you hear the term target panic discussed a lot in traditional world, but not as much in the compound market. Why is that? Well, in the traditional world, you see it. it it's so much more prevalent because you know, people are shooting with no sights, and you see that archer that doesn't even get their bow to full draw before they let it go. And compound shooters are looking at him like, what the heck are you doing, man? Right? 
And that traditional archer might say, well, I've got target panic. And the compound shooter doesn't relate that because they get their bow back to full draw every time. But then if you look at that trad guy that's locked off the target, it's usually very prevalent. I mean, they're locked feet off of the target, and they're dropping their bow or jumping a target compound shooter. Like, well, I'm not, I'm not that bad. I mean, I can't quite get my pin on there, but it's not that bad. Holy mackerel, right? So they don't necessarily equate it to that. And most people, you know, if they can get on the target, are punching the heck out of that trigger, and they don't relate that to any type of problem because the bow still goes off, right? Most of their arrows still go toward the middle. But if they want to be at that, but they only can get so good, they can only get as good as their recoil bracing allows them to. If they want to go to the next level and they want to shoot an arrow with zero input from the shooter, then you have to learn how to concentrate. You got to learn how to move. You got to learn all these things, what decisions, and all the stuff that we just talked about. If you want to get to the next level, that's what you got to do. But, you know, compound shooters, and archers in general are pretty, archery so fun that people are pretty, you know, they're pretty good with just being okay at it, you know? And, and archers themselves are such great people to be around, you know, it's just a good time. And, you know, here I go making some, uh, making a little bit of work out of it. But if you want to get to that next level and you want to be able to control your business, in extreme stressful situations, this is how to do it. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's other programs out there, but you've got to be a good student and you've got to be asking the right questions. You know, what what am I actually learning here in this instruction? Is my instructor telling me what to do? Or are they telling me exactly how to do it? And if you understand the core problem of shooting, it erases other instruction programs because if you're not getting to that, then you're not dealing with a sustainable program. So, What kind of time or money um, investment is usually common to fix this problem of target panic? Well, people do, people do research, you know, and, and they don't want to spend a lot of money on it, and I get that, but uh, they'll do research on what's on the Internet. You know, that if you look up target panic on the internet, you'll, you'll read all kinds of stuff about it. But again, you got to relate all that stuff back to the core problem. So you know, a person may spend, may spend a couple hundred dollars on it and they may think that money is well spent for a while. But if they didn't deal with the core problem of shooting, you know, they shoot good during the clinic or they shoot good just after the clinic, but then things start because then they learn. Their mind learns it again, the subconscious. Oh, hope the gremlin's back there again, working and working and working. And so people get stuck in this cycle, and they think, well, I guess that's as good as I'm going to get. But in my program, I've never had anybody not be able to do this. You know, I've had lots of folks come to me and say, well, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's going to work for me. And I tell them, it's not going to work for you. And they, you know, I, if I do a clinic, I tell people that all the time. They, uh, I'll be two and a half hours into, into this clinic. And I said, okay, look, folks, if this whole thing I've been talking about, it's not going to work for you. And you see their faces drop and they're like, oh, well, what are we <laughs> listening to this guy for, right? It's not going to work for you. You have to work for it, but you got to know how to do the work. And I, I get that all the time. People call me all the time and say, you know, hey, I, I did this to my bow. I bought this release. I, I, I'm thinking this is going to work for me. And if you're in that mindset that something's going to work for you, then it's, it's not. It's not going, there's nothing out there going to work for you. You've got to work for it, but again... You got to know how to do the work. So people will spend some money on it, but when they, if they call me on the phone or they listen to this podcast or they take the course or whatever, it makes sense. And it's a lifelong thing. I mean, I don't have people practice their shooting. I have people use 
shooting, use this absolutely unnatural act of shooting, creating an explosion. We're using shooting to practice concentration. And when you do that, and you're building that mold, the mold becomes so strong that anything outside the mold is absolutely unacceptable and way more easier to recognize inside the shot. So, you know, people, you know, when they come to me, it's, you shouldn't have to come back because when you leave a clinic of mine or take the course, you are self-sufficient in the diagnosis and treatment of anything that could arise. And I'm telling you, hope throws stuff in there at you all the time. So, but now you know how to fight it. And uh, it's just a fantastic thing. You know, I just was thinking about, and I, I'm wondering, I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, have you ever seen Charles Barkley try and hit a golf ball? Absolutely. And his Absolutely. swing, and he takes a perfect swing practice beautiful. swing, mm -hmm. and he's, you know, big, strong swing. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls the club back, and when he goes to go down, mm -hmm. he, like, he Ball stops goes. halfway. Yeah. And then he, he, like, flips at it with his hands, and that's yeah. his golf swing. Is this the same thing? Absolutely the same thing. Just like when you knew you weren't going to shoot that arrow, when you had your finger pinned behind that trigger and you knew you weren't going to shoot the arrow, you said it yourself. You put your pin right on it. There was no travel to target from below or above. You just you knew it was 30 yards and you stuck your 30-yard pin on right? Same thing with Barkley. He does those practice swings. There's no impact, right? There's no impact when he does that. And then he tries to make his, because he's doing open-loop movements on those, and those are supposed to be open-loop movements. But then he gets up there to that ball, right? And now he's going to hit the ball. And you would see, I mean, big Charles Barkley, little golf ball. You've got your golf club. It's not much of an explosion, right? But now there's consequences. And, gee, I don't know if it's going to go. i, I got to do this. Right. So he starts to try to do closed loop stuff, right? And he it just falls apart. It blows the totality of the movement away, right? So... Yeah, it's it's the same thing on a, on a little different scale. Let's take another quick break here. Have you guys heard about PhoneScope? PhoneScope is a privately held company that makes custom molded, precisely engineered smartphone digiscoping adapters. Photographing wildlife has never been easier. Take digiscoping photos and videos from your smartphone and share them with your friends. PhoneScope stands behind their product with a 100% money-back guarantee. PhoneScope is the future of digiscoping. Get yours now. Use the JSCOT16 promo code and receive 10% discount on all purchases. Check them out at PhoneScope, that's P-H-O-N-E-S-K-O-P-E dot com, or on Instagram, at PhoneScope. Wilderness Athlete is committed to improving the health and quality of life for the outdoor athlete by providing field-tested, scientifically validated nutrition and sports performance products. Check them out at wildernessathlete.com and use the J. Scott promo code to receive 10% off any order. Okay, Joel, how is your program, you touched on it a little bit, how is your program different than other programs out there or just going and looking it up on YouTube? Well, if you, you know, you, you've got to be asking the right questions of your instructor, whoever you choose to go to, and hopefully you do choose some instruction. But again, if you're asking those questions of, am I getting the what or am I getting the how, that's what differentiates me from other instructors. because. I am fully involved in getting you to experience it. And so you know how you did it. You know, if they're just teaching the what to do and they're not getting down to the core problem of shooting, it's a non-sustainable system. So you've got to really break it down and analyze it. And that's the difference. 
you know, I'm not giving you a system that where you're only going to be good during the clinic or during the class, you know, or two weeks afterwards. This is a, I teach you how to do the work. The work gets you the control. So it's a, it's a very unique system and it's been tested and tested and tested on myself, on all these people that I've trained, you know, in gunfighting, in hunting, which is all pretty much the same stuff. It's an adrenaline filled event and you got to know how to do your business. So it's, uh, it's very, very different. If you, if in an instructor's training, if they believe that a controlled shot can be made automatic, and that's their goal of their training. That is a scientifically unsustainable system. I understand that a controlled shot will never be automatic. It's so unnatural for you to cause an explosion and not have a response to that. It's so unnatural that you know, you have to, <laughs> you got to get into the how and the mental skills, skills that will actually transfer to real things. So you can't be in this fantasy world that something's going to work for you. So beware of that. And, you know, I invite those questions. I want people to have those questions of me. And I better have a darn good answer for them. And I do. Joel, archery is a pretty hands-on activity. How does an online class benefit someone that is looking for instruction on this? So I realize, I mean, I travel around the country doing shooting clinics, and, and not everybody can get to a clinic. There's a lot of archers out there, and every, like I said, every archer is dealing with target panic, shot anticipation in one form or another. So that's why we came up with the online course. I mean, I have a lot of, of people that are calling me from other countries, and it's, it's you know, difficult to even talk on the phone, you know, with other countries, different time zones and all this other stuff. So now people can go to their computer, they can go to their phone, and they can have it right there with them. They can be on the course. I mean, this, the... The online course in controlled process shooting, it's got 49 different, 49 or somewhere in there, different videos, very specifically titled. You know what you're getting in this specific video. You watch the whole thing, and then if you need reminders, you can go back to certain videos or whatever it is. I do, I talk about the entire science. I give you the testing for the speed limits. I talk about the the decisions that need to be made, how to make those decisions, how to carry them out. And then we've got a traditional archery track where I go into all the use of psychological triggers and how to set those triggers up and why. And I do a lot of demo shooting in that. And then we've got a compound with mechanical release track where we're dealing with, you know, how to choose a release for a closed loop control system, how to set it all those things, how to run that perfect shot, what questions to ask yourself, what decisions to be made. You run through the whole thing, there's those two different tracks, and then it all comes back together on how to actually work the system. It's filled with demos, and, uh, you know, I've got several other people in there. I've got my boy Bodie in there doing some shooting, showing people how he runs through a trigger. And it's, you know, now I can reach the masses. Like I said, Jay, I'm on a lifelong quest to get rid of this stuff because I see the frustration in people. It was the same frustration I had after I'd missed so many bull elk. I mean, like I said, it took me 13 years to kill a bull elk with my bow. And that is nonsense. Life How do you shoot now, Joel? I shoot a long bow. Now, a long bow or recurve. And I killed, uh, let's see, I killed, I didn't, I didn't kill an elk until 2003. I didn't kill a bull until 2003. I could not figure my business out. Finally started to figure out these decisions, all this stuff. 2003 came along and now they're falling like rain, right? So as I killed my last bull, 
I've never killed a bull elk with a sight on my bow. I've shot them all bare bow. Uh, I killed my last bull with my compound with a release and no sights in 2009. And I've harvested six bulls since 2009 in various states with stick bows. And once I saw an arrow fly out of that stick bow and go into the side of an elk right behind that shoulder, that was it. I am completely addicted to the mystical flight of the arrow, as Ted Nugent would say. I mean, I just love watching that thing. And to watch that thing go into the side of the critter that you've been chasing, it's really cool. So that's why I shoot stick bows now. And I, I like the challenge of it. I mean, I shoot, I shot with my fingers for a while. Now I shoot with my thumb. I've shot with my thumb for the last almost four years now just because I needed a new challenge. And uh, now that's become uh, quite the challenge. And it's I've harvested numerous bulls with my thumb. It's just uh, it's cool stuff. You're also on SWAT, correct? Yes, sir. And you, so you shoot a rifle, you shoot a handgun a lot, correct? Mm-hmm. And so you use all of this stuff with your own marksmanship every day in your own shooting of these firearms. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I do it all the time. I mean, I get to, and I get to train people from all over the all over the place all the time, and I see the same things. I just went and trained a, a SWAT sniper team uh, last week. And, you know, those guys were all shooting with hope. And I gave them a very specific shot with a specific target, and they all yanked the trigger. And, you know, as bad as that may sound, I mean, it was a, it was a fairly difficult shot, but they had no plan on how they were going to do it. They got up there, they put that reticle on the target, and they saw it moving all over the place because I was making them shoot off one foot. and you know, I do it for concentration practice. And but they didn't know how to concentrate. I just kind of did it as a as an evaluation so they get to actually see what's going through their head or realize what's going through their head during a shot. So yeah, I I practice what I preach on a very consistent basis. I mean, I had SWAT firearms uh, yesterday. So my Who my do you SWAT, believe this? But, Go ahead. I was just going to say my SWAT team is different than every other team that I've went and trained because they really get engulfed in this stuff constantly. I, I make a point of it. (laughs) Who do you believe this online class is for? I believe it's for every archer because if, if you're in the throes of target panic, if you're in the frustration, it's the how to get out of it. If you've, if you're a brand new shooter, it's the how to stay out of it. Right, if you get this as a brand new shooter, like my boy Bodie is nine years old now. He's been shooting a bow since he was ten months old. But he shoots an extremely controlled arrow. And so new shooters, I mean old shooters, anybody who has ever shot anything is my target audience, if you will, because if you have ever press the trigger on anything and cause an explosion, or if you've let a string go on a stick bow and cause that explosion, you are dealing with shot anticipation, target panic, whatever you want to call it. Joel, what's next for Iron Mind and what's the future of your organization? So we're doing this online course. We're launching it on April 1st and After that, I'm going to do probably an elk calling course, online course, and then I will do probably a precision pistol or precision rifle course as well using the the controlled process shooting stuff. And so that's, that's where it's going to go. And, you know, we're going to get a lot of feedback from this class, and the feedback that we get will, that's the beauty of the online course is I can, you know, you buy the course, And if I have to update something, you will get a notification that something's been updated and you already have it. So when you, when you log into that thing, you'll have that new precious little gem if I, if I happen to find one. So. So in other words, if you buy the online course, you can go back and, and, and once you 
buy the online course. You can go back as many times as you want. And not yep. only that, if you learn new things yourself and you learn new applications, you also will get those new uh, epiphanies, if you will. Yep, absolutely. It's it's a lifetime subscription to this course. You buy it one time, and there there you have it. And we've got we've also got uh, shot consultation where you can do you can video yourself shooting. We've got instructions on what camera angles we're looking for. You send that video to me. I'm able to put it in a certain software that allows me to market and, and slow things down. I send that video back to you, and then you get a phone call from me, and we talk about it. And uh, it's really cool to be able to do that, too. So that's, I mean, it's, the, on my new website, it's, you can do anything you want to do. You can get the online course, you can get the book, you can get the video shot consultation, you can do all kinds of stuff. And I post all my writings and all my newsletters and all my YouTube videos are on there as well. How do people find this online course? How do they find your website? It's ironmindhunting.com. And they can email me at joel at ironmindhunting.com. It's J-O-E-L. And uh, you go there and it's pretty self-explanatory. We've got it. It's it's set up very well, very easy to use. That's awesome stuff. And uh, for the listeners out there, uh, Joel is uh, asking that you use the J. Scott promo code if you do want to sign up for the uh, online course. Make sure to use the J. Scott promo code to receive a $25 discount off of Joel's online course when signing up. Well, it's been awesome getting to hear a bunch of this, and I know that this is something that everybody wants to know, you know, why target panic happens, and most importantly, how do they fix it? I I think you basically are going to cover all of that in this course. Absolutely. I mean, life is too short not to have this information. I I need people to learn from my mistakes because there's no reason that they have to go through what I've been through in target panic. And they may be in the middle of it right now. There is a way out of it. And that's what we're bringing to you. Uh, you know, you don't have to be in front of your computer. You can have it on your tablet or on your phone as well. Yep. Yes, sir. That's That's pretty fantastic. I'm glad I was able to get you on the podcast and um, it's always fun talking to you and and uh, it's, it's exciting stuff for sure. Yeah, Jay, I can't thank you enough for having me on, sir. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, until next time, uh, buddy, God bless and remind those listeners to check you out at ironmindhunting.com, correct? Yes, sir. And also on Facebook? Yes, sir. Sounds good, buddy. Will you be safe? I know your job puts you in harm's way a lot of times, and uh, you be safe, and I uh, look forward to talking with you again and appreciate all your time you spent with us here. All right. Thanks a lot, Jay.